on the game, Jack. There you go, you're up now. At uh, NAGP, the sensitivity. online and get everything set up and uh, are you still with me there Mikey? I'm still with you. I'm still with you. Why don't you, why don't you um, this guy Burger here, uh, you got the camera on now. His signal is a little strange so I'd move away from him right now and try to uh, tighten up your signal and cycle through everybody. Yeah, just select someone else. Beauty. Yeah, we'll just watch John Solberger in the uh, Aston. Currently in P12 and qualifying there. Beautiful looking car. There we go. We get some sound back into the system. Like we're at a real racetrack now. And here we go. Sorry for the inconvenience, folks. We just switched uh, machines, and uh, we're back live in qualifying. Thank the Lord. Now, Mikey, uh, during Q2, you're going to jump in the car and uh, get in so you can switch around? Oh, a little bit of contact there. Yeah, I'll come back in at Q2. Attaboy. Kevin Savoy in the pits. Another speedy driver there for you. How's the timing sheet look? I suspected uh, full time in the 151. Wow, 151 406. Reinhard Berger. Yeah. Yeah, so we should be seeing that. Uh, the 51s, and we may even see someone sneak a 50 in there. Uh, these guys have been known to do it, but um, that definitely is uh, a quick time. That's uh, approximately close to. Uh, Last time uh, GT1 ran here, uh, pole time was right around on there too. Yeah, last night watching some of the guys drive, I thought uh, a 150 flat wasn't out of the out of the realm of possibilities there. Chris Moses back in P14. David Canavan in P15. And Marco Carrado Conti in P16. Aaron Parsons back in P17. A little bit of a surprise for me there. Well, Aaron uh, really uh, took it to the bank there in uh, Le Mans. He won the Q race and the feature event, you know, chalking up about 26 points for the first round, which is incredible. But that collected a bit of. Uh, you know, success ballast, and uh, I don't know how much he's carrying tonight. Did you happen to catch that? Uh, just like you, Mikey, to put me on the spot for that? No, I don't have that information. Well, I'll take a look real quick. <laughs> and, uh, you just, uh, you just uh, handled the director's chair. And, oh my God. and we got uh, Greg Myers in P21. Steve Kegerer in uh, P22. Ian Jolliker back in uh, P24. A little surprising to see Ian all the way back there. John Wathen, race partner in P25. And Big Al, the boss, Merriman, back in P25. Uh, we got to give Al a little bit of credit there. He's been uh, busy trying to sort out our problems up here. Well... Problems are behind us for tonight. Looks like I still have uh, something to work on. Yeah, Mikey, this stuff can be a mystery. Yeah, well, let's not worry about it. Uh, uh, Lou Mascarelli, uh, Lou Mascarelli, here's some uh, action from last week. Um, exciting stuff, but. Uh, Up, looks like Alessandro Smith was a plus and drive through pit. 
Well, we had some aggressive driving, it sounds like, last week, Mike. I guess. And Tiago is taking over P1. You can expect him to uh, not give it up to the... Mr. Parsons has 40 kilograms of success. And uh, Andres Preto, 30, and Brad Maris, 20. That's your success, fellas. I just want to throw a little shout out there to Rabbit Racer. Sent us a little chat message thanking us for getting us on uh, TV tonight. Well, it's a miracle we're here. Good to have you. <laughs> we'll take a look at Rich Roman. He's in uh, P2 right now. Doing a great job. Let's see how he does on his sector split. He's going to chase down that pole position. Celine's just a wonderful car to drive. I took Pat out for a few laps last night. Rich was afraid I was going to wreck it on him, so I had to switch out and take another. <laughs> he said I couldn't afford the rent on that one. Sliding it around pretty good. And a little bit off the pace there. Miss that, Mikey? Kevin Savoie is taking up P1 and going out to lay some more hot laps down. What's that guy think he is? Quick? Uh, I, I guess he is pretty darn quick. I'm just going to switch over to leaderboard and see what he put it in. Getting down there on 151, 322. Actually, Kevin Sawa is racing out of Allardville in New Brunswick. Can you get Matt Butt uh, insurance in uh, Canada, in the French portion? Uh, they must have a lot of open roads out there for him to get this kind of experience. This guy is fast. He's a pretty darn fast. I've raced with him for quite a long time, and uh, he's always been capable of uh, alien type speed. Especially in qualifying sessions, given you know, him being in the right. Way with his times. Also, just remember, Jack, that the Celine, it's almost like the Celine built for this track in Bruno. The Celine has always been a, a, in this car pack, has been you know, the top car here. Well, I'm sure Kevin and Rich will be uh, fighting this one out to start this race. I'll take a look there. Looks like we got about seven minutes left. Thank you. 
good spot. That's a great run for him, too. Well, I knew he was a top right. 10 finisher last week. Quick here. Well, should be learning a, a thing or two. Mr. Poole, but at the same time. And John Sportelli in P6. Yeah, we need to welcome back John Sportelli. Uh, that's uh, John uh, Sportelli uh, from uh, yeah, uh, the north. Uh, and his last name is Sportelli. Yeah, John's driving out of Liverpool, New York right now. Hey, Jared Keene up at P7. Yeah, Jared having a nice run. Yeah, in that McLaren, Jared racing out of Cary, North Carolina. Well, if you look at the cars in the top, top six cars, the cars I thought would be quick here. Juan Monroy in P8. Solid. Yeah, Juan making a good showing in the uh, Aston Lauren Weisman, uh, B9. Lauren Kevin's Mr. Savoy's teammate in the other uh, second of the uh, back line. Felines. And what? They are. They're known at the uh, North American Grand Prix as the French Connection. In P10, we have our Monday night. One of our broadcasters, Brad Maris. Brad Maris and the Anger Racing Team. He and uh, uh, Preto uh, were the winners here last uh, last time. The uh, GT1 came to Bruno uh, with a 1-2 finish there for the Anger Brothers. And uh, also finished on the podium, both of them, at uh, Walmart last week. So uh, look, keep an eye on those guys. Uh, they'll be a pair to watch, that's for sure. And right behind him, teammate, Andre Prieto. Yep, like I said, Andre. Great paint jobs on those forts. David Canavan. And the Lister Storm, I believe, in P12. I personally like that Lister Storm myself, but uh, you'd have to be a real good driver to put that up the top. Chris, Chris, oh, Chris Moses P13 just put it into the fence. Uh, Chris seems to be struggling a bit here. Yeah, but, you know, he's just trying to, to, to jam up a quick lap here, but he's, uh, he's definitely going to be a threat in the race regardless. As will Aaron Parsons. Yeah, in that uh, Ferrari 550. Steady driver. He's got 40 kilograms of success balance. Yeah, that's quite a bit of weight to be carrying around. Now, this is a, this is a fast horse. Just a little shout out there to Burger. How you doing? Great for joining us on the uh, broadcast tonight. Thanks for joining in. John Solberger in uh, P16, driving the Aston. Rob Taylor. Good job. Rob Taylor. In P17. Sorry, I'm at a little lost.
running in his GP last couple of seasons. He's had uh, mixed success in GT1, but then uh, uh, as he gets more seat time, he seems to be uh, increasing his fitness percentage and uh, his placement in the match. And, uh, Christian Hamilton in P18. Andres Cole. Yeah. Yeah, glad to see the hamster uh, back there. In, what is it? Where was he in the 18th spot? Who's that? Christian? Hamilton. Uh, he's in a P18. Andre Cole in P19. Andre's in 19th spot. Since it, uh, picked his pace up a bit from last season. Uh, he was teamed up with Rich. And, uh, yeah, and Andre Cole racing out of Bogota, Colombia. We've got quite a few uh, South Americans with us tonight, folks. Uh, we want to thank those guys for... Uh, for joining in AGP and uh, taking part in what we believe is uh, probably the number one GTR2 If you're not racing here, what area? You? You're not racing! You're right, Mike, and just uh, a little shout out to anybody watching you want to get in on the action. We've got racing on Monday nights, we've got racing Thursday nights, and starting up shortly, we've got racing coming back on Saturday again with the uh, Jap cars. That's right, open wheel. Camp car season Saturdays and NAGP. Check it out. But like you said, we've well, got uh, we got about five seconds left. What yeah. do we got? Ten seconds? Yeah, and that looks like uh, how it's going to end up there. Looks like Jeff uh, was able to, uh, to top uh, Kevin there at the end. That looks like the way she's going to be. Well, that's just fantastic. Congratulations to Tiago. Congratulations to Savoy for uh, tonight's feature event. Should be a barn burner. <laughs> Let's hope so. I'm sure it will. These uh, top ten drivers uh, are all going to be in the thick of it. Uh, a little surprising, maybe I shouldn't be. Uh, my uh, Monday night partner, Jared Keene, is in uh, P7. Way to go, Jared. So, Mikey, should we run down uh, the starting order here? Looks like we got 33 drivers tonight. Yeah. Another packed field for NAGP. I'll be right there. Just a little shout out here, a uh, little garage time while we're uh, getting in this Quali 2 uh, rejoin session. Uh, all you guys at NAGP, we're run on, uh, funded by donations. We appreciate your donation. Every little bit helps to keep the wheels turning here, keep the engines in tune. Feel free to give us a donation online. Check with the admins on our website on how to do that. We all appreciate it. And again, like I said, well, running down the uh, let's run down the uh, starting grid for tonight's race. We got four minutes. Take her away, Mikey. It looks like we're going to have a race start from uh, pole with Diago Canola. In uh, four, one of the cars I believe was going to be uh, quite quick here, and um, Tiago has put it on pole as I. On my way around to it. Next to him is going to be Kevin Savoy in the um, in the Celine. Behind him in third spot, second row, Rich Roman in another Celine. Next to him, David Poole in the McLaren. 
David Poole, teammate Soul Young, starts in fifth spot. Next to him is John Fortali. Uh, Fortali in another Ford GT. Behind them, Gerald Keane starting seventh with a great run in the McLaren. To head up the fourth row. Next to him, Juan Monroy in a uh, Aston Martin DBR9. And behind them in the fifth row, we've got Andres Preto and Brad Maris starting ninth and tenth, the Anger Brothers. These are the guys who won this race the last time, so keep your eyes on them. And Jack, take it away. Yeah, after that, we got uh, Lauren Weisman. Lauren running the Celine as well. Chris Moses. Uh, Chris is driving a Ferrari, I believe. Uh, you'll have to excuse me. I haven't been around. around. Yeah. Uh, Marco Conti. Marco is in P13. Behind him, we've got uh, Mr. Parsons in another Ferrari in P14. P15, David Canavan in the Lister Storm. P16, John Solberger. P17, Rob Taylor. P18, Christian Hamilton. P19, Andres Cole in another Celine. And P20, Scott Andrew in the Aston Martin. Away you go, Mikey. Al, Al Merriman. In the Ferrari 575, teammates with uh, Chris uh, Moses, starting in 21st spot. We've got Douglas in a Lamborghini, will be starting 22nd. Behind them, we got Ian Jolicor in uh, the Konasang. Next to him, John the Mac McIntyre, all the way from New Zealand in that Aston Martin DBR9. Next to him, Steve Kager, known to drink quite a bit of beer, and he is driving a Lamborghini. Greg Myers in the second of the Ferrari 550s, 26, 27th, John Wobbin starting in the second of the Kona Sags up with the Angel Tony Atkins in a Lamborghini. He'll be starting 28. Salem Montgomery Jr. He'll be starting in a Ferrari F40. 29 spot. New to GT1 this season, George Azevedo. He's uh, he's going to be running a uh, Ferrari F40. Fresnik Halili in the uh, Maserati. The blue Maserati. Two teams of Maseratis out there tonight, folks. And he'll be starting 34. 31st, excuse me. Bjorn Hyman is uh, driving another Maserati. He'll be driving 33rd spot after serving a penalty. Same with Alice Andro Smith. He'll round up the field 34. 34 drivers. Uh, excellent turnout. Not a surprise, though. Mondays and Thursday nights are just jam packed with excitement. Very popular series and uh, both uh, at both um, race nights and uh, Saturday's coming along. We hope the uh, the champ cars will really uh, pick up the uh, attendance. Um, we ran them as a uh, fun race during the break last season, and they drew quite a bit of uh, of wild action, and it was uh, really a lot of fun. Yeah, I had the opportunity to uh, try those out. And, uh, because it's, it's quite an exciting uh, mod to this sim. Yeah, pretty fun. Yeah, I had a chance to try those out, Mikey. And, the, the boy, those cars are fast. Uh, they got a lot of downforce. And the braking is unbelievable in those cars. Yeah, we'll take it out on the Indianapolis 500. Well, the track pack hasn't been put out yet, uh, so I guess we'll have to wait and see. We're moving over to the next session. Ah, looks like the uh, weather is looking decent. This uh, Bruno track uh, is a notorious weather events. Anything can happen, of course.
looks like everybody's heading out there, Jack. Uh, yeah, out to warm up, probably at a little practice in on the pit entrance. Yeah, like a recon lap, a recon. All right, time to make your prediction. Time for you folks at home to uh, get in the chat there at live stream and make your predictions for tonight's event. Aaron Parsons had dominated at Le Mans last week, but serving a weight balance penalty is not really a penalty, but it's kind of a, 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 a I don't know, carrying a piano, maybe, you know? So he's going to be, uh, he's going to be hindered a bit, and that's going to cause him to uh, be a little more careful with his tires at it, with the added weight, it's also going to hurt a bit on, on a course like this, so. But you've got the best driver in the worst condition. What do you think is going to happen? He's going to come out of it all right. All right, Mikey. What's your prediction for tonight? Ah. Um, I'm going to have to go with uh, Rich Roman. I believe Rich Roman is uh, his type of course. I know he's got boo time on this uh, circuit. And uh, in the right vehicle. Well, Mike, um... I'm up on Rich Roman, been following him around on his uh, warm-up lap there, and that's exactly who I was going to predict as the winner tonight. Uh, well, you can't predict the same guy as me. Yet. Well, I'm sorry. That's that's the guy I'm taking. I, I just I had him up on the screen. That was going to be my pick, and I'm sticking with that guy. The 36, the Celine, Rich Roman. Okay. Well, then I'll just have to uh, say, well, I'll just take the other side of the old age I'll go with uh, Sportelli, uh, John uh, Sportelli. Yeah, uh, Sporto had a, a, a top ten. He was in ninth position in the last race, so yeah. you can't count him out of anything. Because anybody out there. But I'm really cheering for uh, Jared Keene. I hope he can hold it together and uh, get himself a top ten finish. That would be uh, spectacular for him. Well, there's another one I, I sort of let slip by there, Mikey. Uh, Savoie might be, uh, might just be the guy to pull her out tonight. Well, you know, I, I never want to count Kevin out, and I uh, never would, but he's in the right car. The car is suited for this track. He and Rich are going to have a good go in this race. I'm not going to count out Thiago. Um, but, uh, you know, hey, you know, Sport this could be Sportelli's race. He could have uh, come to grips with the board and be sandbagging a bit. You never know. Well, yeah, you can't count uh, any of these guys out, especially Tiago. I know he's been working on his pit strategy a little uh, over the last season and a half, uh, trying to get that better. He's had some unfortunate incidents in the pits, been passed in the pits a few times. Let's uh, hope he can do a little better and let's get ready for the start of this race let's go in forty six laps tonight is uh, your race lap limit and the only thing that could make it shorter would be weather but, uh, I'm predicting right now that uh, it looks pretty good. I don't see any clouds yet, but we're not out on track. But uh, as we get started on the grid, we got to keep an eye on the skies and uh, see what kind of uh, cloud movement we get. Because, like I said, we could be getting wet. 81 degrees Fahrenheit, 64 degrees ambient temperature, but 81 degrees cat temperature. 40 seconds ago, I haven't seen the track tents come up that much, so uh, it's going to stay relatively mild for the snow. Well, about 20 seconds ago, grid's filling up.
get ready folks, because uh, here we go for round two, and we're out of there. We're off. Yeah, I got jumped up in the big key, but uh, you get swallowed up by the field as they head into turn one. Santiago is able to hold it out. He get a little wide there. Pull oh, on the inside. Along absolutely. The Holy yeah. Yeah. Yep. Savoy on third. Looks like Savoy is going to take him as well. Yeah, well, uh, looks like uh, no one's uh, settling down yet. Everybody uh, jockeying for position. Usually uh, a little bit more subdued on the first lap, but these guys are going for it. They're in tight. They're battling for this right off, right off the start, Mike. Yeah, well, that's, uh, that's great because we want to see a lot of action tonight. This track can give you a lot of action, especially in the first few laps. So, uh, yes, Portelli up to fifth. Stay clean. And Tiago all over the back of David Poole. Almost looks like Tiago was having a look on the inside, and hopefully they're starting to settle down a little bit. Bull, Canola, Savoie, Roman. To be all, everybody seems to be clean. Everybody just little tight battles as we work our way through the first lap. Absolutely, it looked like back down through the field. Looked like a great start and a lot of competitive action out there. So long up to six. Yeah, it looks like uh, Gupper, uh, Gupper Douglas here trading, the, you know, trailing the field. He like he's had a little bit of contact. He lost his uh, front clip and his hood, and uh, he set it in the bonnet and he set it into uh, the pits to, uh, to change that. Tough break for Gupper. And we got uh, Chris Moses up to P7. Jared Kane in P8. Being overtaken, though. Jared's dropped down to P9 now. Lauren Weisman in P10. Juan Monroy up to P11. Brad Maris, P12. Battling out with Marco Conti. Great side-by-side -side action there. Yep. And right beside them is uh, Aaron Parsons. He might uh, reap the benefits of this little battle that's going on. David Canavan up to P15. Rob Taylor up to P16 in the Nissan. Solberger into P17. I think I saw one of those uh, 4GT, the yellow ones, uh, lagging a bit there. Oh, uh, that won't be good. Big Al Merriman, P18 now. Andre Cole in P19 getting a little tap from Ian Joliker as Ian uh, goes to take the spot away from him. Salem Montgomery Jr. in P21. Scott Andrew in P22. Christian Hamilton. Christian Hamilton in P23. John Wathen back in P24. Boy, there is action all over the back of this pack. George Azevedo in P25. Steve Kagerer, P26. John McIntyre, P27. Followed closely by Gregory Myers in P28. Greg having a look on the inside, trying to take that spot away from him. And Bjorn, looking to take that spot away from Greg. Tony Atkins in P30. And Alessandro Smith in P31. Oh, poor old Krasnick Halili. It looks like he's got a whack of damage on that car in P32. Yeah, yeah, he's, uh, he's been uh, bringing up the backhand. Uh, he may have been involved in some contact on lap one. Yeah, and Gup Douglas finally out of the pits there. Looks like he's got the damage all fixed up. Yeah, tough break for Gup, but, uh, you know, there's still a lot of racing left. Uh, Smartali up to fifth spot, Smartali. And back up the front, David Poole. Still with the lead. Does 
warn you, you need to watch out for his battery. Like you said, there's still a lot of racing to go, Mikey. Any one of these guys can have this race. Yeah, Moses worked his way up to seventh spot ahead of Andres there. Breathing room. But Kevin Savoy. A little wide there. The rant ladder uh, ran a little wide, allowing uh, Juan Monroy and uh, Brad Maris to close in a bit. Looks like the uh, the guys carrying the weight are starting to gradually creep up. You got guys like Garrett Parsons with 40 kilograms, and Dave Canavan, and Brad Maris all they're all carrying weight. Well, they're all doing well with the weight, but we'll have to see how it affects the tire wear. Well, pool. Boy, oh, Cannon doesn't have weight. It's Preto with weight. Sorry. He'll pool Canola Savoie, making a great race out of it so far. Portelli up to fifth. Followed by Sol Leung. And Chris Moses in seven. Andre well, Prado. Six is still those uh, McLaren, Fords, and Salines. Yeah, and uh, the lone Ferrari in seven. Jared Keene still hanging into uh, D9. Still in the top 10 there. Keep it clean, Jared. Let's have a good race. And Laurent Weisman rounds out top 10. Another thing you got to remember, too, in a course like this, that, you know, pit strategy is going to work into this race drastically. It's going to be a big factor. And with these guys running, 46 laps, you know, the pit window is going to be in that 23 range. And um, so that's when we'll start looking for guys starting to drop in for the pit stop. But the pit stop strategy tonight is definitely going to make a break. Oh, we've got a driver off into the kitty litter. I couldn't catch who that was. Either uh, Mr. Uh, Halili or it's uh, Mr. Berger. Boy, these top three cars are in tight together. This is a uh, fabulous action we've got going here at Berno. And Rich Rowland, and uh, far behind. Rick Kalili is, uh, he's uh, just taking the, uh, the uh, agricultural uh, way back to the uh, paddock, uh, not even bothering with the tarmac. Interesting strategy. Uh, he, the race leaders are going by now. He might have picked up a flat tire and might want to just stay out of the way. Yeah, that car's pretty messed up. Or as you say, he might be just doing some ground maintenance on his way around. Oh yeah. up the hill for fifth and he's got him so, so young making a move on John Espagatti as they head up the hill and around to the start finish nice move and nice pass by the climate driver I don't think John's gonna let him get too far out Uh, sold to get the advantage and torque up the mountain. Well, 
I'm on board. Turbo kicks in. It's pretty quick. I'm on board with Sportelli now, and it looks like uh, uh, John's pushing pretty hard to get back up to him. I'm sure that battle will be going on for quite a few laps. Rich Roman keeping Kevin Sawan in sights. And still the top three drivers there. Poole, Canola, and Savoie. Canola all yeah, over the like back. That. Yeah, he's, he's getting a little tired of being behind uh, Poole right now, so uh, look for him to make a move here real quick. And a little bit of a peak there on the inside. Not enough room, though. Definitely trying hard. Let's jump on board with him. I think you're right, Mikey. I think he's uh, getting ready to pull a big move here. Well, that remains to be seen. It's like uh, there's a certain portion, especially in the first sector, that pull has definitely got the advantage over the uh, in the McLaren. Um, and uh, Thiago seems to be able to catch up, you know, sometime in that third sector. But the faster corners, pull is definitely quicker. And Savoie is just biding his time behind. Uh, if these two take... Well, look at, look at Savoie and Roman. They're just both just sitting back there watching what's there going goes, on. There goes... Oh, I think... Thiago takes that away. Uh, yeah, oh, 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 oh. This is exciting. Oh, and uh, Savoie had a little bit of a bobble there. Well, like I said, Thiago's not too, uh, not too keen to be behind uh, Paul right now, so... Uh, He's going to be looking for a way by, so um, let's hope they don't uh, get too connected. Well, he's got a face full of David Poole, and he's got a rear view mir mirror full of Kevin Savoie. Looks like uh, Sol Young has looked, uh, been able to gap out a bit over his mortality. He's got about the same amount of time um, over Chris Moses. Boy, it almost looks like Savoie is uh, going to be in a position to make a move on Canola. This is lap seven now. We've got a three-way race for the lead. And this is unbelievable. Actually, take a look there. Rich Roman coming in. He's making it a four-way race. Hey Mike, what, what do you figure, what car do you figure is going to be the hardest on his tires? Well, I think, uh, you know, anybody carrying any weight is going to be definitely... I think everybody's going to gonna suffer a bit in tire wear. This track is, a, you know, is a, is a bit abrasive and uh, it does cause uh, more tire wear than other circuits. Canola having a good look. There he goes. Canola's got him. Yeah, there you go. Uh, a good clean pass, too. Yeah, he had an incredible run coming down to that turn and uh, was able to get by with uh, no half. And look at Savoie. Right up behind Poole now.
This is great action, folks. Unbelievable. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, oh, and that allows Roman to get by, too. Oh, he just couldn't pull the trigger. And he did. He did pull the trigger, and he's by him. Look at this. Three wide. Yeah, unbelievable. Three unbelievable. Wide. Unbelievable. Pole touches Roman there on the left rear quarter, but uh, Roman able to hold it together. Jeez. And they're still scraping pain as they head down to the next corner. This is a slow section. And, uh, pretty fun stuff so far. This is unbelievable racing. But they can't let uh, Keago get too far ahead now. So, uh, Chabwa, the guy's got to think about keeping him in sight because he's going to run away as uh, Poole takes a look inside there. Almost like there might have been some more contact. Very, very close there. It did. Uh, I, I think Poole has won his spots back. Well, Tiago's checking out, so uh, you guys better uh, stop messing around with Poole and uh, get back up to Tiago. Yep, that little battle between them has uh, played right in Tiago's hands. Just give him a little bit of breathing space. Well, he, he definitely was the quickest out there. He had pace on everybody, and, you know, besides losing the lead at the start of the race, he... Uh, obviously decided that now's the time when he needs to uh, pull out. Well, they're getting themselves spaced out a little bit now. After that intense three wide driving, it's no wonder. They probably want to settle down a little bit. Yeah, for the time being, you know, but in four or five more laps, they're going to be back up together. Hopefully. Ab absolutely. Uh, maybe while they're stretching out a little bit, we'll just uh, cycle through and see how the rest of the field's going on. Well, meanwhile, Sportelli's dropping back into the uh, grip of uh, Moses now. As he is uh, slowed a bit in... Uh, Turning around, I believe lap 10, lap 9 currently, and uh, Sportelli has, uh, his pace has dropped off as he is now sliding back towards Moses and Bredo. Yeah, and uh, Bredo is giving Moses quite the push as well. Andre Bredo and P8. Got a little bit of breathing room between uh, him and Lauren Beisman in P9. Juan Monroy. Oh, Juan Monroy, we have contact. We have contact. Yeah, Brad Maris. Got a little, uh, got a little trading paint session, but. Uh Jared Keane is falling back to uh, P12. Well, you know, you get these guys back here, like Aaron Parsons back here, and uh, Marco's in 13th, but Parsons in 14th, and Canavan in 15th. These guys more than likely are going to be thinking about how they're going to work their strategy to help benefit them due to the weight they're carrying and the lack of pace they have. So these guys might stay out a bit longer and uh, or double stint the tires if they can. I doubt it with the extra weight. But they're gonna they're gonna do something. There's gonna be a bit surprise for those two guys. I gotta think so. Absolutely. Back here now with uh, John Solberger uh, chasing down Rob Taylor. Solberger running in P17. Big Al Merriman, P18. Sale Montgomery Jr., solid 19th place for him. Scott Andrew in P20. Greg Myers, back in P21. 
A little surprising. Greg had a sixth place finish last week. Ian Jolliger in uh, P22. Looks like he's been hounded by Christian Hamilton. And in P24, Steve Kager in the Lambo joining that three-way fight there. Steve Kager, a uh, motocross racer, now Lamborghini driver. John McIntyre back in P25. And Bjorn Edmund back in P26. John Wathen sitting in P27. Being followed by Andres Cole. Tony Atkins back in P29. Being hounded by George Azevedo. Looks like they've got a little bit of a battle going on. out there somewhere. A battle on the track. And the Gupper back in P31. Alessandro Smith in P32 in that Corvette. And Krasnick Khalili looks like he's parked it in the pits. Back out with our race leader, Tiago Slippery Canola. Put a little bit of a gap on to Kevin Savoy. P3, Rich Roman, still being hounded by David Pohl. It's only lap 11. Been a lot of action so far for, for 11 laps. These guys are going to be exhausted at the end of this. I'm already exhausted. Been some great action. Well, uh, yeah, all I can say is that uh, Kevin needs to uh, to make sure that he can uh, maintain eyesight on uh, Tiago if he hopes to have a chance in this race. Now, Kevin is definitely going to be, you know, the, another one to watch in his pit strategy. He's always found a way to uh, to extend the life of, uh, of his rubber and his fuel economy. And... Uh, Make some pretty spectacular re-entries after pit, so uh, <laughs> anything can happen with Kevin. Well, you're right. You don't want to let uh, Tiago check out and get too far ahead. Uh, back um, running along with uh, Sol Young in uh, P5. He's got some clear track ahead of him and just putting in some solid laps. And followed up by Sportelli. That's my daddy. Chris Moses in P7. Still being hounded yeah, by Prado. Yeah, Sportelli's been able to hold that, that half second lead over those guys. Um, get that. And uh, while they battle back there for, uh, for seven spots, Sportelli is, uh, you know, he may just be cruising. One thing about Sportelli is uh, he works a pit strategy. He's got a strategy for the whole race. And it looks like Prado is going to... Is uh, definitely... Prado doesn't look like he wants to spend any more time behind uh, uh, Chris Moses. Well, good luck to him trying to get by Moses. He's one of the toughest guys in the league to get by. You know, whether he's running strong or he's uh, hindered or he's uh, damaged, he's still, he's still tough to get by. Uh, yep, you got that right. Right on board he's inside. Had, he's had multiple championships. And he is one pit wizard. There's a few pit wizards. You know, some of these cars are throwing up a bit of uh, heavy speed. 
sparks, uh, guys running, running low to the ground tonight here in Bremen. Running low and soft. Well, with that battle with Moses and Prado going on, uh, Lauren Weisman is uh, just ever so slowly catching up to that little battle. It's going to be a good three-way. Well, those two guys have a lot of history. They've raced together a long time. And, uh, and, uh, <laughs> they know each other pretty well, so uh, we'll see how that goes. And hanging on to those, that threesome is uh, Brad Maris in P10. John Solberg's got Rob Thayer right on his butt. And Rob makes a move on the inside and for uh, 17th, and he's got him. Solberg coming back around. Uh, well, yeah, not able to get him, so a great, great move by Rob and that Nessa. Yeah, I just caught up with you there. That looked like a very nice pass there. You know, Ian Jolicor just struggling back here in that uh, Konus Eggbird. The Eggbird is, uh, is a very quick car, but uh, you know, uh, looks like those guys are uh, struggling a bit learning the car. Uh, but that team will get it together because Jolicor is uh, alien talent. We've got uh, Marco Cani in the pits. I'm not sure what kind of strategy this would be. Uh, pit strategy? A little early in the uh, race, isn't it? Yeah, I'm looking at his car. Just uh, doing a quick camera around. He's doing a full stop. He's obviously not too happy with the uh, rubber joint start because he's taking tires right now. Yeah, Ian Joliker back in uh, P22 being hounded by Steve Kager. Yeah, as you mentioned, a little surprising for Ian to be uh, that far back in the pack. Well, like I said, he's just getting used to a new car. And behind them is John McIntyre. Bjorn Hedman, back in P25. Andre Cole, in P26. Out there running by himself. Good opportunity to put in some solid laps, though. Pick up some time. Tony Aikens, back in P27. Being hounded by John Wathen. Looks like we got quite a race going on here. And P29, George Azevedo. And looks like we got Marco back out on the track. Cup Douglas back in P31. P32 is Alessandro. And Thiago just went by Marco Conte as uh, Thiago starting to uh, get into some lap traffic. Well, uh, great for Marco tonight, but uh, he's back out on the track. Well, this might, uh, this lap traffic could play into the hands, but he, he's opened up quite a gap with the uh, B2, 3, and 4, though. We just got a chat on board here from uh, Chris Nicolili, and uh, he wasn't very happy with his car setup during testing. Didn't do enough testing, he says. Couldn't get the front tires to work. They were as cold as ice all the way through. Uh, that's a tough break. Well, that two, that two, three, and four. They're going at it still.
Whoa, 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 whoa. Back together. Oh, they're out of there. Back together. Yes. Go to a uh, rear car cam. This is exciting racing. Whoa, we've got contact. We've got contact. We just got a little wide there on the exit corner. Looks like poles on the inside. We've got you taking him into the slow yep. section of the track. Yeah, and we'll move into third. Boy, they lost a bit of paint there. Hey, both teams have paint shops. This is unbelievable action we've got going here in P2, 3, and 4. The take yeah, well, like we didn't want, but Tiago is checking out. Well, as you said, Mike, uh, once these pit stops uh, start up, we will see who is the master in there. I'm just going to jump up to the leaderboard there. How many seconds has uh, Tiago got on everybody? Do you know, Mike? Yeah, right now he's currently about 11 seconds up on top. Wow. So, yeah, and then, you know, the third, third, yeah, second, third, fourth, and then there's about three seconds back to fifth, and from there about eight seconds back to sixth. There's a bit of a gap in the top ten a bit, but uh, searching back through the field it looks like there's a bit of a gap everywhere. Well, you know, looking when back here at Canavan and uh, I'm looking at Canavan and Preto, um, excuse me, Canavan and Parsons, and they're just cruising back there, 13th and 14th. I want to see what these guys do in the pit strategy. Well, I was going to say we've only if we've only got about 15 seconds between P1 and P4, that could all be wiped out in that pit stop. Yep. Well, these guys back here, uh, Canavan and Parsons. You know, cruising without any, doesn't seem like they have any worry about what's going to happen. They got some planned, I'm telling you. Well, I'm back with Sportelli, and uh, we've still got that three-way battle going on there. Sportelli, Moses, and Prado. Yeah, well, that's another battle that was doomed to, uh, to happen. As Sportelli falling back into the grasp of these guys. But, uh... Hey, he's holding his own there. Halfway through the stand. Yeah, we're only halfway through the stand. Well, a little more than that. In about six laps, we'll start to see uh, pit stops within six. Oh, laps. and Chris is making a move on the inside, and he's got Sportelli. Up, oh, he got. Oh, oh Sportelli's in the last spot. Oh, man. that puts John back oh. to ten, P ten. Tough break for Sportelli, uh, but it's only lap 17. Brings Brad Maris up to P9. Lauren Weisman. He's zigged when he should have zagged. In the P8. And Prado in P7. That puts Chris Moses up to P6. Might be time for uh, Sportelli to uh, turn down that uh, that uh, Campari drip he's got going in there. Uh, yeah, to turn up the uh, Campari, John. Yeah, Chris has got to be getting tired of uh, a rearview mirror full of Prado after all these laps. No. Prado's not going to give him that chance. Uh, 
on board now with Prado. Get to look and see what he sees. The rear end of Chris Moses. This is a great four-way battle going on here. Now the top runners are dealing with traffic now. They got uh, got into some, and, uh, but Canola's through it and pulling away. He's got up to a 13 second lead now over South. This battle here, P6789, this is tight, very tight racing. And as these guys battle it out, it may give John Sportelli an opportunity to get back into the hunt. Side view from Brad Maris's car as they go around the turn. Looks like Brad's getting a great draft off. And he makes an excellent pass. Yep, Laurent's going to want that position back. Well, that was a great pass by uh, Brad. Given an inch. far enough in front of uh, Prado so he can't get a, a real good draft off him but Prado is right up behind him. This might be the time.
take a lot of patience on Andre Prado's uh, part to wait for the right moment. Jack, I've been there behind Moses for lap after lap after lap. When his car just had an edge in certain spots. That I oh, oh, they're side by side now. There. Prado's just can't hold it. Ferrari's not going to let it happen. The Ferrari's just quick enough. But Prado now has the... Prado's got the inside. And they're going to touch. Look at him. Moses, hold them off. Incredible close racing, and Andres dives into the pits. That's allowed uh, Lauren to get up behind Moses. with a little bit of a bobble there. Moses is up to P4, so we've got somebody in the pits. Rich Roman diving into the pits. David Poole in the pits. Kevin Savoy in the pits. There's going to be a lot of pit action in here in the next little while, folks. Ian Joliker in the pits. Marco Connie with his early pit stop has uh, dropped back to P24. We'll see how this all turns out for him, though. David Canavan back to P23. Here's another smart character when it comes to uh, pit strategy as well. Juan Monroy back in P22. And John Sportelli back in P21. But we'll have to wait till the cycle moves through. Andre Cole in P20. Tony Atkins in P19. Brad Maris down to P18. Andre Cole, P19. Bjorn Hinman dropping into the pits. Aaron Parsons in the pits. Now Brad Maris back up to P12. And the Prado Moses battle. Side. Having a great look. Just can't pull the trigger to get the job done. Having another look. Just not enough grip to pull it off. These guys are going to be 
exhausted by the end of the night. What a battle this has been. And Brad Maris pulling up to join that battle as well. Brad giving it a good slide on the corner. be wrong maybe he has but we still have that battle going on with Prado and, and Moses yeah those guys are pretty Andres has had two or three good looks and just can't seem to pull the trigger to finish it off As you said, Mikey, probably the least favorite guy to be in behind is Chris Moses. Yeah, I don't like it. That uh, Ferrari, his must look like it's about 40 feet wide, Andre, right now. Well, it's not that he's anything more than, you know, he's not going to just let you by. He's going to make you earn it, and he's one of the tougher guys to get by out there. and. Uh, so with Andres, so these guys are, uh, and they've been there before so many times, you wouldn't, you wouldn't believe it, but, uh. Yeah, Chris is going to take the preferred line, and he's going to force them to go offline to try and get around them, and uh, it's not the preferred method to get around, I guess, and Chris just isn't making any mistakes. So long has been up there in P6. Now. We've got our Rich Roman chasing down Kevin Sawa. David Poole in P2. And up there in P1, Mr. I'm checking out in this race. Tiago Slippery Canola. Yeah, unless something happens to him, he's uh, definitely got an edge on everybody tonight here at uh, Verano. He's at 4 GTs working pretty well. Looks like he's got that thing hooked up. But Poole, Savoie, and Roman still battling it out. That is a battle for the podium going on there. And Sol Lung back in a solid fifth for Sol. Shouldn't be a huge surprise. He ended up in uh, P10 in the last race. Kahneman now up to 11th after the pit stops. But Aaron just, you know, just can't get it going in that Ferrari tonight. It's, that weight is just too much for him at this course. He's just chewing his rubber up. He's just, you know. Well, it'll help him get rid of some of that weight for the next race, though. Oh, trust me. I know he's already thinking about that. After the way things are going tonight. But, he's still in the points. Running 14. And he'll probably... All the way back to 16. He'll probably improve on that. Yeah, there's 20 laps to go. Well, we've got uh, two teammates, Brad Maris and Andre Prado. Still, I'm going to use the word stuck in behind. Chris Moses. John Sportelli 
in P9. Not given anything up yet. Actually, P9 is exactly where Sportelli finished the last race. Canavan up to P10. Yeah, come on, Sportelli. And Canavan got by uh, Juan Monroy, but uh, Juan's not known letting him get too far out there. Hounding him good with that big Aston Martin. Yeah, well, I reckon that uh, Canavan uh, got a little wider fuel load for this uh, stint, and uh, he's going to be giving it a go because, what? He's got nothing to lose. Yeah, I'm back in P12 with Lauren Weisman, but it looks like he's got some severe damage on the, uh, the right front end of his car there. Oh, looks like one of the uh, McLarens is off there. As Gerald Keene is uh, off the track. Oh. Back in 15th spot. He's back on, but he, uh, he definitely lost uh, a good bit of time. Well, still up there and in the points. A good run for Jared. Looks like he might be carrying a little bit of front end damage there too. But Jared's got Mark O'Connor all over the back of him. And Rob that one. Roman are catching back up to pull. Going to be a battle right to the end. Rob Taylor back in P17. Christian Hamilton, P18, just out of the points. And Big Al back in P19. Great it doesn't look like anybody made a big jump in the uh, pit stop except uh, the best benefit I saw came to uh, Canavan, who's now up to 10. Uh, yeah, no one can have been. I bet he double stinted. Did, did he take tires, I wonder? Oh, he had to. Everybody took tires at this track. P20 is Greg Myers. And Ian Joliker still back in P21. That uh, might be noted. Uh, Ian Joliker's actually driving with a broken hand, though. Oh yeah, how'd he break his hand? Uh, he's one of the uh, our boys in blue, and uh, I guess you could say... Oh, I thought he was a mounted policeman. <laughs> no, we, we're we sort of giving up the horses here. We got rid of those about a year ago, Mike. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, right, that's what you all say. I know, I've seen those red jackets flying around up there. Steve Tigger back in P-22. In the Lambo, Scott Andrew P24. I used to follow uh, like Steve around uh, quite a bit. Uh, he used to be a teammate of mine, and I follow his car around quite a bit because there was a an endless flow of uh, bats coming out of the back of whatever car he was driving. Get him. Bjorn Hinman back in P24. Tony Atkins soldiering on P25, doing a pretty good job out there. John Watson, back in P26. Andres Cole, in the Celine in P27. George Azevedo, P28. And the Gupper, P29. Up traffic pretty well. David Poole in P2. Kevin Savoie. And Rich Roman, not that far behind. Yeah, this lappy traffic has uh, eliminated the time they had made up on Poole and uh, they got into a bit of trouble and uh, fell back quite a bit. And Sol Lung is still hanging on to his. P5 as well. He's uh, he's just been running his own race tonight. 
good race for Saul. Yeah, that can be uh, that can be good or bad. Uh, you know, running out there by yourself with no one around you. You know, you're just racing the clock, you're racing the gaps, and uh, sometimes you can uh, lose concentration. Tough to race by yourself out there. It's in, in no way an easy spot to be in. Absolutely. You can almost put you to sleep and make one little bobble and you're out. Yeah, just like uh, like Steve Kager uh, came up with that uh, a long time ago footage of uh, a drive he and I raced at Sebring where uh, I had a little bit of a falling asleep problem on the uh, back straight at Sebring and uh, came, uh, came to and uh, put it in the wall. <laughs> I did walk away from that, by the way. Uh, well, that's a good thing. We can always replace the cars. Yeah. We got excellent pit crews that's and mechanics. Right. That's right. You just can't play the, replace those idiot drivers. I don't know, there's plenty of idiot drivers. Well, P1, 2, 3, and 4, it looks like they've uh, got a bit of gaps on each other now. I don't know if anybody's going to make a serious run for the a better podium finish. Back down at P6 with Chris Moses. Chris and Andre. Uh, this has been the whole race they've been battling this out. And Andre and Brad, teammates, running 7 and 8. And Andre and Brad are carrying up, I would say, a bunch of weight as well. Kilos. Andre's got 30. Brad's got 20. Kilogram. But it does look like uh, Chris is going to be able to. Uh, if he keeps his race together, it looks like he might be able to hold Andre off. Yeah, there's a lot of racing left. We got 16 laps left. Boy, the work Andre's put in trying to get by him in the uh, previous stint and in the beginning of this stint is got to leave him scratching his head on how the heck he's going to get around this guy. Well, you got two, two drivers who are very evenly matched and, uh, and, uh, and Andre's is going to have much of a problem back there because he's a go-kart racer and, you know, go-kart racers are used to running tight and running close and, uh, that, that experience is definitely going to benefit him. It has been the reason why he's been able to stay close to, it, to Chris and run that close that confidently and not uh, you know, get into Chris or cause any problems. He just fighting his time. Gonna try it again.
that's still on board here with Andre Prado, and he's given everything he's got. Chris just seems to be able to maintain a little bit of a gap right where he needs it. another 50 feet and that's about all need Chris needs to hold Andre off. running their lines are running straight they're you know they're not pushing bad moves and bad positions and uh, it's just clean racing I haven't seen anything uh, too crazy unfortunately there were a few incidents so far but those guys didn't lose that much time as I'm looking down here at uh, Can Ed Canola's teammate uh, John Esparcati and uh, he's, he was one of the unfortunate guys to, to have a problem in uh, in the early stages of the race, but um, he's still in the top ten. Geez, I don't know, Mikey. You say it's not too crazy. Three wide at the beginning of the race there? That's insanity. That's not very crazy. That's not crazy. Yeah, you're probably right. Free ride with the top drivers in the cockpits is probably not all that crazy, but it was exciting. Oh, yeah. Back up so long, hanging on to fifth. Running smooth and steady. Well, it's his spot to lose. Rich Roman coming up the lap traffic. Dip of the lights, thank you very much. Kevin Savoy hanging on to third. And David Pohl coming up to some lap traffic as well. Tiago's running um, 152s and mid to low 153s, and your winner from last week, Mr. Parson, and he's running with that extra weight, 54s and 55s and 56s, so that weight making a difference on that Marinello, and uh, that's the difference in the race, that's why Aaron's not running up front. Yeah, those couple of seconds are a big couple of seconds over 45 laps, that's for sure. Currently, Savoy has, uh, I believe, the quick lap of the race. Both Poole and Savoy through that lap traffic rather neatly. And Rich Roman coming up on some lap traffic as well. Yeah, Savoy's got past lap right now at a 152.405 race lap. That's fast. I mean, that's not that far off the quality laps. No. Rich Roman being uh, held up a bit, finally gets by. The difference being 
is that Tiago is doing has done quite a few more laps in the 52s than anybody else, and that's why he's way out front. Yeah, once he got out in front, his, those tents sat up, and he just stretched his lead out. Hey, you can always run out of gas, right? Whoa. Now, that would be interesting. Not the way he'd want to finish this race. Yeah. And they've all uh, been quite lucky on weather, so I think the weather uh, chances for weather to see the week was uh, minimal or average, so he lucked out and they got a dry race, which has uh, allowed them to be, uh, or to do as well as they've done. Well, out, um, out following Tiago around your race leader. In that Maytag Ford GT1. What lap we running now, Mikey? Just starting lap 35. Well, still some time left. David Bull, hanging on to second, followed by Savoie and Roman. So long. He has been in fifth for I don't know how long. And still all by himself. Chris Moses, P6. <laughs> and right in behind him, guess who? No say. But those two, uh, Moses and Prado, they put a little bit of space between uh, themselves and Brad Maris, who's hanging on to P8. John Sportelli. Still in there, not far, uh, not that far behind in P9. Canavan up to P10. Looks like Moses has got some traffic ahead of him with uh, Andres right there looking to pounce. As well. they head down the front straight into turn one, Moses is going to the inside, but uh, what's going to happen with that Maserati head. Oh, looks like he's going to give him room, uh, maybe? Yep, yep. I don't know, but they're, they're, they're three wide. Well, he gave him the room. He gave him the dip of the lights, but it doesn't seem to ease up too much. Well, that allowed Andre to catch up, at least. Whoa, whoa, no, no, no! Looks like he just took out Andre. He took Andre out. Well, he didn't take him out. He just missed the breaking point. Yep. Unfortunate yep. for both drivers. And Andre has to slip back behind the Sportelli. Yeah. Sportelli has taken over the P8. Brito's falling back to P9. Boy, that's going to give uh, Chris Moses a lot of breathing room, I'll tell you. I tell you, there's, uh, there's a lot of Spanish uh, being uh, yelled in that uh, yellow uh, GT4. Doesn't appear to be much damage there, though, so... Hopefully the car is still yeah, in good shape. It was just a tap. It was a tap. There was no body work. It's just unfortunate. Looks like he's got a little bit of metal work under the uh, left rear quarter panel behind the wheel. Maybe just slightly bent. So that's not going to affect him too much. Yep. Sporty up to but B8. See Sportelli is caught up to, it looks like he's catching up to Maris. Absolutely. And Brad seems to be falling a little behind there uh, in the last half dozen laps. Uh, Brad may have been dealing with traffic too, slowed him a bit, get through traffic. 
Moses is still here. But that has allowed Moses to just step up into his sixth spot and cruise along. He's got Brad reeling him in as best he can, so this is another uh, race that could shape up towards the end here. Yeah, this is interesting. He's just uh, traded one yellow car for another yellow car. Whoa, we just had a Maserati get lose, lose control right in front of Canola. I bet you Canola swallowed his heart on that one. Oh, that'd be a terrible way to end the race. Soul Lung coming up to some lap traffic. Probably the only traffic Soul's had in the whole race. Hey, well, let, being all alone. Yep, lets him by. Nice and clean. Rich Roman soldiering on in P4. Savoie in P3, and Pole in P2. And your race leader, checked out and putting on a clinic. Yeah, he's got about a 17 second lead now. Um, Catastrophes, you know, something uh, would have to be pretty major to it to happen for him to lose that lead. But well, we saw what handed with Andre Prado. Yep. You know, one lap car, well, yeah. one wrong move, and that could be the end. Marco's back in the pits now. He's coming back onto the track. Had yeah. a rough night there in the Maserati. Yeah, that'd be his second stop at least. He had that early stop, and it must have been for mechanical problems or tire choice. Well, more than likely, that's the reason he had to come in at this point. Because he stayed out during the other stops when the other guys were stopping, so... This was, you know, he just had to adjust his his pit strategy for whatever reason, causing that initial stop on lap 10 or 11, whenever it was. Well, we've got uh, Chris Moses back in P6, but uh, now Brad Maris is taking over the chase in P7 and is trying to reel Chris in. It's but kind of Sportelli. Uh, Sportelli not far behind. And Andre. Eight, eight or nine to go. Eight or nine to go. And Andre, pushing, pushing hard all night long, is really going to have to make up that that time to get back up there. He may not have it left in the car to do that. David Canavan in tenth. With Juan Monroy. Battle shaping up there for, uh, for ten. You've got three drivers right there. Yep, Canavan, Monroy, and Weisman. Yep, so we'll have to watch that at the finish. That's a great yeah, bit of Merriman, competition there. Uh, Greg Myers battling out back there in, uh, for 17. Val Merriman in a 575. Myers in a 550. Jared Keane hanging on to some points. He's in 15th. And Rob Taylor. Last points paying position in 16th. Got a bit of clean track there. He's keep it clean. Keep it going. He'll be finishing in the points. And you're right. Alan Merriman and Greg going at it. Greg having a look 
on the inside. Al pretty much closed the door on that one, but Greg's hanging on to that inside. Looks like he's going to take him. You see the 575 is the handling car and the 550 is the power car. like he wants that position. Al getting a little sideways there. position. It sure looks like Myers really wants to take that away from Big Al. Greg's having a good look. Letting some lap traffic by. Leaders are coming through these guys now. Well, that's opened up the door for Greg there to get right back on Al's tail. Christian Hamilton joined in this battle. Boy, from P1 all the way, well, actually from P2 all the way back. We've got some great racing going on right to the end. And Greg having lots of looks. American Grand Prix. Lots of looks by Greg. He just can't squeeze it by Al. some more lapping traffic coming in. And it looks like Gregory Myers is taking that position. Sport Kelly is just desperately trying to catch Maris here for seventh spot. Maris may have some uh, tire wear issues as he's been moving around in the corners quite a bit. Well, we've got some close action there as the leaders try to go through. Greg Myers is, uh, there he goes, he's let the leaders through, and that's going to let Big Al, nope, nope. Big Al's right up behind him again. Yeah, I thought he was going to let Al through, finally realized that that was not one of the blue flag cars. 
And that's let Christian get right back up into this again. Had a great three-way battle going on here, folks. Hey, a little shout out there to JJ Gordon. Sorry, uh, so in intensely watching this race. Didn't see your chat messages come up. Thanks for joining us. Not surprising that uh, Canavan has made his way back up there. Yeah, another shout out there to Ian Jolliker. He couldn't make it. Couldn't. He says he couldn't take that nonsense on the track any longer. <laughs> Ian, we were wondering what's happened out there to you. And it looks like Christian's gotten by uh, Big Al as well. Yeah, Big Al struggling a little bit in that 575. Tough car to drive, track like this. Portelli's now right up on Brad Maris for seventh slot. Trying to get back to where he started the race in sixth. And, uh, <laughs> well, his Brad gets really loose coming out of turn two. And now they're dealing with traffic. Looks like they're going to get by the first portion of it clean. Hey, I'm in as Portelli gets, uh, gets in position. Brad's having some trouble there. It's all right everywhere else, but he's getting really, really in trouble. Absolutely, but uh, Sportelli's worked his way back up to uh, uh, where he was before he took that little bit of a spin-off. Yeah, so, uh, you know, it's not the best race uh, that he had hoped for, but at least he hasn't given up much, if any. Well, he is improving. Uh, Mikey, uh, last oh, week oh, he finished ninth. Oh, oh, one of the, uh, one of the uh, Celines is off, one of the Matma Celines is off, French Connect. I think it was Lorenz. Yeah, Lorenz dropped back to 12. Yeah, it looks like he might have a little bit of damage there on the front uh, right side there. And somebody else just dropped out. Well, Tiago's on lap 44, so... Uh We've only got a lap or two left here for these guys to get done what they need to get done. So they better uh, step up the game because we're running out of laps. Well, that uh, oh, P11 around this time. P11, 12 is quite the battle going on there. P11 and 12 got a great battle going on. Aaron Parsons and P13. John Solberg, P14. Jared Keane hanging on to his P15. Go, Jared, go. Rob Taylor still hanging into the last uh, points fame position in 16th. Greg Myers up to 17. Christian Hamilton in 18th, and that's been a great battle there between Al Merriman, Greg Myers, and Christian Hamilton hanging in and being the opportunist at that right time. Steve Kagerer in P20. Scott Andrew, P21. Johnny Mack in P22. 
Bobby Arn Henman in P23. Mark O'Connor down to P24. Tony Akins in P25. Andre Cole in the Celine in P26. And there's your leader, Tiago Canola. Quite the drive tonight for him. Yep, he had uh, pretty much his way. As soon as he got into the number one spot, it was just ran away with it. Good job, Nicole. Definitely had the pace and kept the pace. Well, we'll see if, um, if this is going to be the last time around. See if we get a checker flag. Yep. There you go. There's your race winner. Quite the performance tonight by him. David Poole coming around for P2. And we got a major battle forming here for the finish of this race for a sixth spot now that Andres is caught up, or excuse me, Brad is caught back up to Sportelli who's behind Moses, and it's a three car battle as they race to the line. Roman in P4, so long. Hey. Souls in P5, big surprise here. Oh yeah, where'd he come from? Boy, oh boy, that was a steady race for Stoll. And here's Moses. Here they all come, man. D6. Six, seven, eight. Oh, 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 geez, we got, out. oh. Man, what a finish, what a finish, what a finish. It's a drag oh, race. Chris, oh. Sportelli, and Maris. Sportelli! Oh, boy, oh boy. Andre Prado in ninth. He's not going to be happy there, though. Canavan taking yeah, the 10th might. position. Prado might pull again. Boy, he had a great race, though. There was a lot of action. He uh, raced his heart on that one. Canavan coming along for P10. Lauren Weisman, P11. Juan Monroy, P12. Aaron Parsons, P13. Solberger, P14. Jared Kane finishes at 15th. Rob Taylor pulls up the finest final points position in P16. Greg Myers in 17. Oh, and they're dropping out. Mikey, what do you got to say? Closes out here. Say hey, what a race! A lot of action tonight. We suspected it would be like this. We didn't know that it, that Tiago would just uh, run away with it. We expected a little more uh, competitiveness up front, but we got a good show from the guys running behind Tiago, and uh, Tiago just did a fantastic job. What, what can you say? You know, David Poole uh, held on to his own. He fell back. He battled back and uh, came in second, along with um, uh, Savoir finishing out the podium. So I got to say, hey, it was a good race, uh, and there weren't many surprises, but um, we'll just have to see how the season goes. I want to say uh, thanks to Jack, and uh, we'll uh, try and catch you next week from uh, Monza. Absolutely, Mikey. It was a pleasure coming up and uh, being with the broadcast with you again. It's been a long time. Uh, I don't know if I can take this much action, though. At my age, boy, oh boy, my heart rate's going through the roof. And uh, it's sort of a good thing that Tiago checked out because I don't know if we're going to handle a four-way battle for 45 laps. That would have been insane. Uh, thanks well, to all you your better, viewers. Uh, you better get out. <laughs> better get out and get some exercise there, Jack, because uh, otherwise we're going to have to send you a pacemaker. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mikey. I could probably use the pacemaker. Uh, I want to thank. Yeah, no worries. I want to thank everybody for joining us here tonight, and check us out on Mondays 
Check us out on Thursdays and soon to come, check us out on Saturdays too. And if you want to grab the wheel and get some action, uh, get online there to the NAGP, get hold of one of the admins and join on in. And a final word to you uh, NAGP members, hey, make your donations, keep this all live, keep Mikey and I working. Thanks a lot for, this is Jack Ivey and... And this is Mike Monet. And I want to say one last thing, one last word. Great job, John. Way to drive it back. Alrighty, we're out. Good night, Jack. Night, Mikey.